Assalamualaikum and hi to everyone. Thank you for watching this video. So in this video, we'll discuss about the quiz on introduction communication introduction to data communication and networking uh, the previous quiz that we have uh, conducted before prior so let's discuss the answer for that question okay your quiz is divided into three categories we have part a part b and part c so look at the part a you can check with your answer later on so question number one is the answer is c question number two the answer is b question number three is b question number d is question number four is d question number five b question number six d question number seven e question number eight c question number nine d and question number ten is equal to b okay for the theoretical you can find the answer from the lecture note or from the books so on this video we only discuss on the calculation part we we'll look at question number three question number three asks the question about the bandwidth what is the bandwidth of a signal that range from 32 kilohertz to 5 megahertz so you should know what is the bandwidth bandwidth means uh, the difference between the highest frequency and the lowest frequency so based on this question you should identify and extract the information that the lowest frequency is 32 kilohertz while the highest frequency is equal to 5 megahertz and you can detect that uh, the measurement here is quite different so one in kilohertz and another one in megahertz so what you should do the first thing you need to convert both value into hertz so 32 kilohertz when you convert into the hertz value you need to time with 10 power of 3 okay you need to remember the table of conversion kilo mega tera nano pico that that's kind of table you should know so for kilo 10 power of 3 so 32 times 3 times 10 power of 3 equal to 32,000 hertz okay the next one is 5 megahertz so mega need to time with 10 power of 6 so 5 times 10 power of 6 is equal to 5 million hertz so now both units are similar we measure in the same unit hertz so based on this part you can do calculation because the range we have the minus sorry we have the lowest and we have the highest so highest minus the lowest so the bandwidth is 5 million hertz minus 32,000 hertz so your answer will be 4 million 4968000 hertz so this is in hertz so look back at the answer's choice which one is the right numbers so based on the answer answer uh or the choices okay you can convert this one into the megahertz and convert this one into the kilohertz so you can identify uh, the right answer will be uh, b which refer to the kilohertz so the answer is given in the the, the right answer is there in kilohertz so this is the right answer so let's say in the future you found this type type of question uh, maybe it's not question about the bandwidth but it has the value that you need to do calculation so you need to ensure that make sure that the the measurement the unit here are similar if you want to calculate in kilohertz so change both or convert the both value in kilohertz if you want to do the calculation in megahertz so convert those value in the uh, megahertz okay 
So that's for question number three. Okay, next we go for question number seven. Question number seven, the question is about the uh find the lowest frequency. Okay, actually this type of question have a relationship with question number three. You need to know how to calculate the bandwidth. Okay, so the the bandwidth come from the highest minus the lowest. Okay, non periodic composite signal. So what is composite signal? It has multiple sine, simple sine wave. Okay, from multiple sine wave. A non periodic means that there is no pattern when they uh, go through the data. So this signal has a bandwidth of 305 kilohertz okay so the measurement here you need in kilohertz with a middle frequency of 225 kilohertz so this one in kilohertz this one in kilohertz so there's no problem you can count and do calculation in kilohertz so what is the lowest frequency so based on the question it asks about the lowest frequency from the question number three we know that the highest minus the lowest then you get the bandwidth so now based on this question number seven bandwidth are given 350 kilohertz and then the middle frequency is 225 kilohertz okay so you can translate this information into this type of figure this might know the the exact figure or spectrum drawing but you can assume like this one you do not know what is the lowest frequency and you also not sure about the highest frequency but you know the middle frequency is 220 kilohertz this one is the middle and you know that the bandwidth is 330 so that's mean from here to here is equal to 330 so what you can say what you can do here okay uh, the the bandwidth here you divide by two divide by two then you get 175 okay this is 175 so 175 plus with the lowest we'll get this answer 175 sorry, 17 uh this middle minus the 175 will get this answer 175 plus with this middle frequency will get this answer so now you can calculate the highest frequency is equal to 225 plus 175 so it's equivalent uh, sorry this one is 400 kilohertz not 300 is uh, the answer is 400 kilohertz okay and then the lowest point 225 at the middle minus 175 so you will get 50 kilohertz so the answer is 50 kilohertz because the question asks about the lowest frequency if the question asks about the highest so the answer will be 400 this one is 400 it's not 300 but 400 kilohertz so that is on how you can calculate the lowest and the highest frequency if the bandwidth given and the middle uh, frequency given to you okay so next question we go for part b but part b is short you see so question number one least two data communication flow only two data flow so we have three data flow simplex half duplex and full duplex okay you should know what is a simplex half duplex and full duplex but this question only have two marks so you just list down the answer without explanation Next question, match the following to one or more layers in the OSI model. So first, communicates directly with the user application. Okay, the keyword here is user application. So it is application layer. Next, interface to transmission media. Okay, transmission media, we only have two, either wireless or wired. So the interface that connect to the wired or wireless is refer to the physical layers because we talk about the hardware here and number three 
a reliable process to process message delivery so the keyword is process to process message delivery so this one is transport layer next we go for question number two okay question number two briefly explain one of the physical network topology okay we have a lot of topology mesh star bus ring or hybrid topology okay you only need to identify one type of topology so let's say you talk about the mesh topology so you give the explanation what is the mesh topology if you choose to have star topology then you need to elaborate and explain what is star topology what is the bus topology and what is the ring topology explain and then give one advantage and one disadvantage of the topology refer to what kind of topology what type of topology that you have mentioned before if you talk about the mesh topology at the briefing explanation so your advantage must go for the mesh topology for example here mesh topology the advantages of mesh topology eliminate eliminate the traffic problem robust and un, uh, one unusable other can still be used okay privacy and security because every uh, device have their link their own link they do not ch share the link with the others so privacy and security that easy to rewrite because a lot of routes path in order to communicate okay if you talk about the star so you can say that less cabling expense uh, less cabling so less expensive than the mesh topology easy to install and reconfigure easy to fault uh, identification and fault isolation for star okay code bus easy to install use less cable with one long back boon ring easy to install and reconfigure so only mention one advantage okay the next part is about the disadvantage of that topology need to refer what kind what type of topology that you have mentioned before so if you choose mesh topology you can say that amount of cable increase so this one expensive number of input and output port increase expensive wiring can be greater than space so you need uh, to manage more cable because we have a lot of cabling so you need to do the cable management work okay for star more cabling required compare some other topologies okay you can say that more cabling required compared to some other topologies you need to have this compared to some other topology if you just mention that more cabling required the answer is uh, wrong why because mesh topology has more cable required compared to the star okay next is bus difficult to reconfigure any tap of the backbone will degrade the quality of the network and fall of the backbone will stop all the transmission and then for ring unidirectional uh, traffic can be disadvantageous because it only use one flow and a break in a ring can disable the entire work entire network okay so that is the answer you should uh, choose the right topology and then give the advantages and disadvantage of that topology only one the next part question number three based on the figure explain the hope to hope delivery and source to destination delivery process okay for this question the mark is five so you need to explain what is the hope to hope delivery and what is the source to destination delivery process explain what is hope to hope and based on the figure you need to relate it okay for example hope to hope is from one node to one node one node node is referred to the device in the network so uh, let's see pc a41 want to send data to pc ptb 
slash 82. So hope to hope delivery means it goes uh, the data will travel from PC A41 to the router 1 F43. Okay, that is hope to hope. And then the next part from this G84 R1 to PC PTB 82. You need to explain based on the figure. What is the hope to hope delivery? Then you will get full mark. Okay, next is about the source to source destination. Explain what is the source to this uh, to the destination. Okay, so based on this figure, let's say PCA want to send a data to PCB. Okay, so from PCA to PCB is the source to destination. Oh, like this one. You need to uh, explain what is hope to hope. It's process of sending the packet from one node to another node before it can reach to the final node. Okay. What is a source to destination? Source is referring to where the packet come from. And destination is referring to the final node that the packet should reach or should arrive. And then use the figure. Give the example. Okay, so then you will get the full mark. So the next part is part C. Part C contains 10 marks. Question number one. Based on the OSI model, explain the process of sending an email from sender to receiver side. Describe the process for each of the layers. First, you should remember that the OSI model has contain seven layers so you need to explain every layers and the process that you should explain is about the sending an email from sender to receiver if you give the answer uh, receive the email you explain from receive the email so there is no mark so you need to read the question carefully sending an email so from sending, it must go for the application layer first. So person will, who call as the sender want to send an email. So it will use an uh, email service such as Gmail. Or you can um, put another email service provider. So this one at the application layer. Then after that, it moved to the presentation layer, so email message will be translated, encrypted, compressed before it passed to the session layers. So at the session layer, it will manage the data flow and forward it to the transport layer. At the transport layer, the email message is ensured that all email message arrive in order, then it will pass to the network layer. So at the network layer, this network layer is responsible for the delivery of individual packet of the email message from the source to the destination. Okay, this one is network. So this layer is responsible to determine the best route. What is the best path should be selected. So next, uh, the, the entire message arrive at the uh, data link. So this will ensure those data are free from error and pass to the physical layers. And then uh, the physical layers uh, bit to bit. And then you need to mention that the process are reverse order after it reach the physical layers. And then it will go to the next physical layers, data link layers. Uh, Network layers, uh, transport layers, uh, station, application, station, presentation until it receive at the application layer. So the receiver will receive email notification to indicate a new email message has been received. So that is the process. In that process, uh, you, you can provide that about the encapsulation. But because encapsulation doesn't cover into our chapter, in our topic, so 
it is not necessary you just should give the what is the layers responsible toward the data transferred okay so that's for part c question number one next part c question number two okay a non-predict composite signal content frequencies from 30 to 200 kilohertz the peak amplitude is 10 voltage okay then a v okay this one is the peak amplitude for the lowest and the highest signal is 30 volt and 450 kilohertz signal so assuming that the amplitude change gradually from the minimum to maximum okay, based on this one you need to answer question number e number b and c so e define the meaning of non periodic composite signal and frequency spectrum so you have two terms that you need to explain and give the definition so first non periodic composite signal made of many simple sine wave or simple signals that have no repetitive pattern so the keyword is no repetitive pattern so to mark for here and next frequency spectrum the set of frequency that comprise the signal or you can answer the description of the signal using the frequency domain and containing all its component what is the component frequency amplitude and so this the answer for a next for question number b calculate the bandwidth of the signal okay based on this information calculate the bandwidth so the bandwidth the highest minus the lowest then you will get 100 70 kilohertz make sure you use the 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 same uh unit measurement okay and the last question question c draw the spectrum so based on the information given in the question number two you need to draw the spectrum so the spectrum of frequency uh, this x axis must be amplitude this one is a frequency in kilohertz if you put in hertz so you need to convert this value into hertz okay so here uh, the peak amplitude is 10 for the lowest okay for the lowest frequency the peak amplitude is 10 okay the highest the highest part is equal to 30 so the highest at 50 kilohertz signal and then this one is the the highest frequency which is referred to 200 kilohertz so you can draw like this one make sure the label is correct so that this question will give you four marks so total mark is equal to 50 so that's all hopefully everyone able to get the information on how to do the calculation based on chapter number one number two or three so that's all thank you and assalamualaikum